You're wondering how common is B12 deficiency? Would you be surprised if I told you 10% of the population has it? How about 20%? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at some studies that tell us about how common B12 deficiency is in different ages, populations, and how that changes over time, what some of the reasons are for deficiency of B12, and what you can do about it. If you like this type of information and want to see more videos like it, click on the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like it. Okay, let's look at how common is B12 deficiency. So B12 deficiency may be more common than you think, but before we get into like what the stats of that are and how common it is, we want to look at some terms like B12 deficiency and B12 sufficiency. To do that, we're going to reference a study that kind of looked at the stats, and this was a study by the National Health and Nutritional Examination and it was a survey. So they defined B12 deficiency as anything less than 148 picomoles per liter. Now, most U.S. labs will report serum B12 levels with the units picograms per milliliter. In order to convert the picomoles per liter into picograms per milliliter, you have to multiply it by 1.35. So if we take 148 and multiply it by 1.35, we get 195 picograms per milliliter. So deficiency of B12, according to this study, would be defined as less than 195 picograms per milliliter. And this is pretty close to what most labs will report it as. It's usually around less than 200, less than 230 picograms per milliliter. I might go a little further and say anything less than 300 is deficiency. In this study we're referencing, they actually defined a, a different term called marginal depletion, and they define marginal dep depletion of vitamin B12 as between 195 and 298. And I converted that to make it easy. That's in picograms per milliliter. So I would still call this deficiency because I find that in that 300 range, even maybe even 350, people do often respond to B12 supplementation, meaning, you know, some of their symptoms, be it fatigue, what have you, are from B12 deficiency. So they're having symptoms of B12 deficiency. Their levels are on the lower end. You supplement, they feel better. So if you're kind of in this lower end of marginal depletion, which we can also de describe as B12 insufficiency, you know, that, that maybe be worthwhile looking at some supplementation with B12. And sufficient levels I would I would define for sure are above 500. Now that doesn't always mean you have enough, but it does kind of lead us down a different path, which we're not going to get into here today, but mostly just want to point out the difference between B12 deficiency and B12 sufficiency. So for this video, we're going to be looking more at how common is B12 deficiency. And we're going to reference this study that I mentioned, and it was done by uh, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys. And what they found was that there's a clear increase in deficiency as populations age. Now, this was a US-based study, and in this study we're referencing, they they found that as populations age, deficiency rates go up. And this makes sense since stomach acid declines as we age. And stomach acid is intrinsically tied with something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor, when acid is secreted, intrinsic factor is also secreted. So with acid going down, intrinsic factor goes down. Now, intrinsic factor is needed for B12 absorption. It's secreted in the stomach, and then it binds to the B12, and as the B12 travels further down into the small intestine, it's, absor it's absorbed in a specific area of the small intestine. But if there's not enough intrinsic factor, that's not gonna happen. So it makes sense that as populations age, stomach acid goes down, intrinsic factor goes down, B12 absorption goes down. Now, back to the actual study we're referencing. Nutrition examination surveys was done on U.S. populations between the years of 1999 and 2002. And what they found was deficiency rates were around 3% for those aged 20 to 39 and 4% in those aged 40 to 59 and 6% in those people 70 years or greater. So you can see, you know, it's gradually going higher and higher. When they when they changed the term to marginal depletion, remember that was around that 195 up to around 300, the rates of deficiency or rates of inadequate B12 increased quite by quite a bit more. So those aged 20 to 59, 14 to 16 percent of those had marginal depletion and greater than 20% of the people age 60 or greater had marginal depletion. So clearly as you're aging, the B12 deficiency becomes more common. But if we shift what we consider deficiency just 
slightly to 300, the rates of deficiency go up by quite a bit more, two or threefold. So 20% of people over 60 having B12 deficiency, that's pretty common. So now going back to the question, how common is B12 deficiency? Well, you can look at it from this perspective, about 15 to 20% of the adult US population has B12 deficiency. Now this is based on a survey, so it's not the best accurate way to do this, and I wouldn't take it as gold, but as a rough approximation, a lot of people do have B12 deficiency. Now, if you're wondering if you have normal levels or adequate levels, you can check your serum B12 levels and the lab reference range in your local lab may vary slightly on what it considers normal as a normal reference range. So typically it's gonna be 230, 250, all the way up to 1000 or even 1200. But just because you're within that 300 range doesn't necessarily mean you have enough B12. Now there's lots of ways to test for other functional ways to assess for B12 deficiency, which I'm not gonna go into here. We mostly wanna look at what the how common B12 deficiency is. But if you're checking yours and you do have something in the, you know, around 300, even 400, that could still indicate you have inadequate B12 for how your tissues are function, your cells are functioning on a daily basis. So I would consider anything less than 500 picograms per ml to be suspect of a B12 deficiency. Now, part of that would be including doing other testing, but also your symptoms. So if you don't have any uh, symptoms of B12 deficiency, then I wouldn't be as worried about it. If you do, maybe a therapeutic trial of some B12 may be helpful. This is particularly more important as you're aging, monitoring your B12 levels because it is more common as we get older. Now, if you wanna prevent that B12 deficiency problem as you age, what can you do about that? Well. One simple thing you can do is supplement with B12. You can increase the actual amount that you're consuming every day. You can do that through foods. You can do that through supplements. A sublingual form of B12 is probably going to be the best bet since you, that does not require intrinsic factor. Now, another thing you can do from a stomach digestive standpoint is tonify your digestive cells. You can do that by taking digestive bitters. Now, there's different formulas for this, but anything that has like that bitter taste when you consume it is a digestive bitter in it actually helps your digestive tract secrete more acid and become more functionally active. It's the brain gut access that allows it to do that. Okay, that should give you a better understanding of how common is B12 deficiency. And if you have other questions about B12 deficiency, how to test for it, things like that, drop it in the comment section and I may do a separate video on that. At least I will answer your question to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.